Let's hear now from our 2015 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Championship team. And that is, the driver is Eric Jones. He drives the number four Toyota Toyota. The crew chief is R uh, Rudy Fugel. And the team owner is Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch Motorsports. Congratulations uh, to the number four Toyota and uh, the Camping World Truck Series. Impressive, impressive season. Let's hear from our championship driver, Eric Jones. Talk about what it feels like to be a NASCAR champion. Well, <clears throat> I think it's going to take some time to sink in, you know, but just uh, just an awesome season, just a, a real team effort from the start. And, and some of the adversity we went through early on and uh, putting the team back together to championship form there for the latter part of the season and, and really going and, and, and working for the championship and getting ourselves a cushion coming into Homestead and, and honestly still being able to run strong at Homestead all day. So uh, just really proud of everybody. Just um, just can't thank them all enough. And, and thanks Toyota and TRD and just Kyle and Samantha for the opportunity alone. Um, it's just so many things had to come into play for me to even um, even be here at this moment. So it's just uh, it's just pretty special for everybody. And Rudy, talk about uh, you being able to get this championship. Uh, you got nine wins in the Camping World Truck Series with two different drivers. Both of them are up on this stage here tonight. Kyle has five, Eric has four. Uh, and you're a championship <laughs> crew chief. So talk about that. How's that feel? Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, definitely a, our goal, you know, from what was Phoenix last year where we, we knew that Eric was going to run full-time. We kind of <clears throat> we set our goals to, to go win a championship and um, and to bring home the driver's championship for, for KBM and Kyle and Samantha is, uh, is huge. Um, but I, I can't thank my team um, enough, you know, all, all the guys that come on the road and then everybody at the, at the shop. It's just a, it's a great organization. And Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch, you you are a winner. Uh, you 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 went on the racetrack. You went as a team owner. This you you you've become the first team in NASCAR Camping World Truck Series history to win three consecutive owner championships. So congratulations to Kyle Busch Motorsports on that accomplishment. You have the most owner titles in the history of the series with four. Uh, talk about the ability now to also have a driver champion. Uh, and Eric Jones. Uh, it's an honor. You know, it's certainly been uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears over the years, but it's been pretty awesome as well, too. And I can't say enough about the people. Uh, everyone that's that's been at Kyle Busch Motorsports at the beginning, uh, been there now um, or future, you know, it certainly has been pretty awesome to, to work with every one of those individuals. And, and it takes a lot of that in order to get the job done the way that we have over our existence in the series. And uh, to set the record of winning an owner's championship the first year out was, was pretty awesome. And then to continue that on with, with different people on down the line with Eric Phillips and with Rudy and, and Jerry now. And, and uh, you know, we'll see how that continues to go on down, down through the years. But um, I can't say enough about the kid to my right. You know, Eric Jones here is just awesome. He, uh, he did a great job racing against me and, uh, in, in South Florida, I guess the panhandle there in Pensacola with having the opportunity to race in the Snowball Derby together. We had fun. I uh, never would have expected to, to get beat by him in that race, but uh, the last run of the race, he did a great job. We raced clean, we raced hard, and, and uh, he scored the victory. And I, I knew he was going to be good in that day. And, and to get him signed up with Kyle Busch Motorsports and uh, to have the opportunity to work with him over the last two seasons on the part-time side and to get him ready for the full-time side, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that, that he stuck with me and, and that he believed in what our plan was for him to give him this shot and to give him this opportunity. And, and I think he's got a lot of bigger and greater things to, to have on his plate with years to come. So um, all in all, though, I uh, can't say enough about everyone at Kyle Busch Motorsports, uh, the chassis shop, painter, all the body guys, everybody that, that does such a great job that prepares these trucks and makes them so fast and so much fun to drive and uh, bringing home championships each year. Questions now for our championship team. We'll start right here with this gentleman right here, and then we'll go to Jared and then to Reed. Eric, uh, Let's wait for the mic, sir. Thank you. Bill Van Smith from the Miami Herald. Eric, how would you describe your uh, driving tonight? Was it smart or cautious? Or yeah, both? yeah, I'd say it was conservative. Um, you know, I don't think we ever put ourselves in a position to to be in a, in a situation we didn't want to be in. Um, I thought we did a, a good job of, you know, letting everything sort out and then kind of going to work and getting spots. I, it's a shame. I think we had a really good truck, but, you know, we never 
really needed to race or, or had the opportunity to go up and race with the guys up front. So, um, you know, we just kind of ran around the middle part of the top 10 all day. And, um, you know, that's honestly all we needed to do. Let's go over here to Jared, <clears throat> then we'll go to Reed, and then to Bob. Yeah, Jared Turner, FoxSports.com. Uh, Eric, as, as you uh, mentioned earlier, or alluded to, the first 15 races of the year, you didn't have the point lead. The last eight races you did. Um, can you just talk about uh, sort of your mindset over the final eight weeks and basically how you managed to uh, just focus on protecting your lead? Well, uh, after Gateway, you know, back here in the summer months, we uh, we finished 23rd, and I think we were down 20-something um, points to uh, to Kraft and third in points. And, you know, at that point, uh, I don't think I had the right mentality to go win a championship. Um, I think we had the fastest trucks week in and week out. And, you know, I, I think at that point we were just focused on winning races. So I kind of switched my mentality to the point of, you know, take the wins when we can get them, but, you know, we need to take these second, thirds, fourths, and fifths when we can get them as well and not try to force anything. So, um, you know, the last the last eight races, um, even a little bit before that, we had a streak of top tens here all the way to the end. Um, I don't know the exact number it ended up at, but, you know, just finishing the top ten, being com consistent, being competitive and running up front and contending for wins, you know, that's all we needed to do throughout the rest of the year, uh, and, and that's what we did. Let's go over here now to Reed and then to Bob Pockers. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire Service. Um, at this point, you've won a Truck Series championship in your first full year. You've also had a taste of the Cup Series this year, driving, substituting for Kyle and Matt and, and Denny. Um, ideally, what would your career, career tra trajectory be from this point on if you could design it yourself? And are you going to be content to spend a year in the Xfinity Series, pay more dues? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think the Xfinity Series is, is completely necessary. Uh, I have no problem with running a year there as long as need be there. Um, you know, I don't know what the exact career path is for me down the road. And, uh, you know, at some point, I'd, yeah, I want to race in the Cup Series every weekend. And um, I feel like there's a plan in place for that opportunity to, to arise. And um, I'll just keep taking what's given to me every week and go out and try to win races. Let's go to Bob Pachris and then over here to Kyle. Bob Hockers, ESPN. Uh, for Kyle, um, Eric was talking about some of the adversity and you know, maybe his feelings after Gateway. Was there ever a time where you thought this year, man, I don't know whether they've got it to, to win the title this year? And then if you did feel that way, was there a point where you felt like, okay, they, they do have it? Um, I don't know that I ever doubted them with the opportunity that was given to, to both Rudy and, and Eric. You know, I felt like um, – they were certainly missing on some things and something just wasn't quite right there for a little bit. But uh, I always believed and I always knew that, that they figured it out. You know, I think Rudy's a great leader. I think he's done a tremendous job with, with Eric being a younger driver and, and having the emotions that I once had as well, too. And trust me, they were probably still there two years ago. So, um, you know, Eric's done a lot of growing up, I think, in a short period of time. And it's also under the limelight. But uh, I think it's with the great people that have been around him that, that's, that we've had surround him that's brought him to the level of which he raced those final 15 weeks and top 10 at each and every week to, to end the season. Um, I, I never discounted our team or our trucks or our Eric's ability or anybody. I just knew that um, sooner or later it needed to turn the corner. And uh, fortunately they, they did that, you know, and everything turned out well. Once they got through Texas, I think was a rough night and then Gateway was a rough night. They went to Iowa and, and put it right back on top. And uh, since then, you know, they. They seem to do the right things, and um, you know there are a few other moments probably where, where things could have been derailed through the final ten weeks. But um, you know they all did the right thing to uh, focus forward and make sure that they just kept their head on and, and kept going forward. Let's go to the far right, my man Kyle, and then we'll hear from Jim and Jerry. Guys, Kyle Mag, the race chase online over here. Uh, I have one for Kyle and Eric. Um, can you guys just talk about um, racing against each other this season? I know it was the first time you both raced against each other in the truck series. Can you get either of you um, talk about that? I'm um, just you know being on the track for the first time since uh, the Snowball Derby. I just wanted to beat him. That's all. <laughs> How'd that go for you? It didn't work out. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I was definitely excited about it. Um, you know, I think. It had been a while since we got to race each other, and, and you know, there's there's a nice level of competition there that uh, we I want to go out and beat him, and, um, you know, it's, it makes it fun. It makes it exciting. 
Yeah, no doubt. I, I had an enjoyable time racing against, uh, you know, racing my own trucks and, and just kind of feeling it out and knowing where our where our equipment stacks up. You know, that's one of the main reasons I still like to get in it and make sure our stuff's really, really good. And, uh, and we got nice stuff for these guys to be driving. So, um, you know, it was it was fun to race against Eric. Actually, uh, I remember it was Pocono and, and Eric was super fast and I was probably third quick. You know, I wasn't even going to be close. And I told Jerry, I was like, man, you just got to give me what Eric's got because whatever Eric's got, I know I can beat him with it. And uh, it, it was it was that day that, you know, we had a good pit stop. We got out in front of him. He ran me back down. He was fast. He was faster than me at Pocono. Um, but then later in the going, I think some restarts, they got kind of tangled up a little bit. And that was probably one of the moments I mentioned to Bob about how, you know, that, that could have derailed them. But, uh, you know, they, they kept their focus and, and the task at hand and did a good job. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Let's go here to Jim and then to uh, Jerry. JimHunterMotorsport.com. Eric, uh, you obviously started the year <clears throat> with aspirations of, you were, this was the series you were competing full time with and wanting to win a championship. <clears throat> and there seemed to be, during the course of the season, many different things that took place. Kyle's injury, Matt's suspension, getting in for Denny, things that you never anticipated going in. Now that the season's over, you won the championship. Those, all of those other experiences, did they, looking back, did they add to helping you get to this point, to track some mixture, or how would you rank? <clears throat> well, looking back on it, you know, I think at the beginning of the year, um, I had obviously the full season here, and then I had probably around 11 or 12 races in the Xfinity Series, which put me at, you know, 34, 35 races, something like that, um, which is a normal load of races. And then all of a sudden, you know, I had a, a stack plate every week, and I was kind of all over the place. And at first it was a little overwhelming, but, you know, once we kind of got in the groove of it and got used to it, um, I think it was definitely a good experience for me just to be in and out working in with different different people, different crew chiefs, uh, different teams, driving different cars. Um, and honestly, some of the biggest thing that helped me was those cup races this year, just being in those cars and, and seeing that level of competition uh, and trying to adjust myself. And I think all it did was really better myself, especially at this level. Let's go to Jerry, then to Chris. And I think I saw, uh, yes, I finished with him right here. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. Kyle. You've obviously left your mark uh, in, in the history books of the Camping World Truck Series. Um, do you have, you know, what's the next goal? And, and you've got some other powerhouse drivers uh, in the wings. Uh, what, what would you like to see continue for KBM? Um, I, I think that uh, in, in this day and age, you know, we're, we're pretty pleased with where we're at in the Truck Series. Uh, we did the Xfinity thing and uh, unfortunately, it's just too hard to compete against the, the cup guys, you know, at that level. Maybe 15 years ago, we probably could have done it, you know, but uh, so I said this day and age, it's we're, we're good with where we're at. You know, I feel like Kyle Busch Motorsports chassis, those guys, they do a great job building us our, our chassis for our Tundras. And, um, you know, we, we build all kinds of stuff, but through the chassis shop. But um, I'm really looking forward to the future of Kyle Busch Motorsports, you know, with Eric going on and doing bigger and better things. That, that's, that's what our program is. You know, we, we help the younger kids try to come up through, give them a good opportunity to succeed in some good equipment. And, um, you know, they got to make the most of it. it. It's their opportunity, you know, and uh, just like Eric Jones here, you know, we, um, you know, we, we brought him up through with a part-time schedule and, and he did the most of it. He, he won a race, uh, a couple of them the first year or Phoenix, just one, just one. And then last year won a few. And, and this year, again, he won some, a few, you know, so, uh, that, that's how I foresee that it going. You know, we don't have any part-time kids next year, I guess, besides uh, Cody Coughlin. But, um, you know, with, with seeing what Bell, Chris Bell has done these last few weeks at Texas, he drove up to the front. Again tonight, he drove up to the front on, on fresher tires, you know. But uh, there's, there's going to be a learning curve there. I, I don't expect us to be able to come out next year and, and contend for a championship. Um, I would certainly love it if we did. But uh, realistically, you know, I, I think there's going to be a growing there year for the drivers. And, uh, you know, hopefully that uh, the crew chiefs can, can do exactly what Rudy's done here with, with the younger drivers and keep their heads on them and keep them straight and, um, you know, be successful. If we can win some races next year with Chris Bell and, um, and William Byron and Cody Coughlin and Daniel Suarez, then uh, that's going to be a, a, a by far successful year to get each one of those four drivers into victory lane. Got two more questions, Chris to the far right, and then my gentleman right here to the left. Chris Nightcatchmans.com. Kyle, when you guys started KBM in 2010, did you imagine it would be as successful as it is today? 
Uh, I did, of course. You know, I, I wouldn't have done it. And uh, if I didn't think that we could be successful at it, I always thought it would be somewhere that I'd kind of have a, a golf game and just enjoy racing late models and trucks and go have some fun, you know. But it certainly turned into a better business than that. And we've gotten the opportunity to work with some great young talent that's uh, been able to now accomplish a championship, you know. And, and we've done the, the owner's championship thing for a few years, but uh, I've always wanted to grow it past that into uh, these younger drivers and their abilities to, to get championships at a younger age and to progress on through. And uh, it takes good people, you know, um, with, from Rudy and Jerry, um, you know, to Eddie and the chassis shop guys, everybody that, that's at Cobbush Motorsports. It's, it's hard to keep people in the truck series. Um, you know, they, they either want to go venture off and grow and do bigger and better things and or, you know, sometimes the money's just not good enough because <laughs> we got a budget. You got to stay within the budget. And uh, these guys know all too well on how to do that. So uh, just been fortunate to have those good people stick around as long as they have. And uh, that's what makes our company so successful. And despite their inexperience for next year, would you be surprised if uh, William Byron or Christopher Bell was sitting in this position a year from now? I would not be surprised. I'm not counting on it, but I would not be surprised. I think Chris Bell has obviously uh, learned a lot, I'm pretty sure, over these last six weeks of, of racing in the truck series and getting his feet wet more and more on pavement and mile and a half racing, the aero side of things and everything. Um, and, and William Byron obviously having his debut last week, it didn't quite go as well as we would have hoped, but uh, I still think he showed plenty of potential in practice uh, running up front and or qualifying up front and having the opportunity to race up front. But um, I look forward to the offseason just being able to sit down with those guys, talk to them and teach them some things. And I hope Eric's still willing to help them out as much as he can if they have got questions for him because he's obviously Eric running this full season. He's been in the truck a heck of a lot more than I would have been in the truck. So I don't necessarily have all of the answers uh, for those guys uh, on what they can do better. Um, but Eric will. And so I feel like he's he's a KBM guy here here on out, you know, from from this time forward through his whole career. He's he's won his first championship for us. So. Um, he's a business guy now. He's final, a company man. Final question, far left, go ahead. Uh, this one's for Eric. Zach Banks, um, Coral Gables Post. Going into this final race, how conservative was the number four team's approach to this race? <clears throat> you know, from a, a setup standpoint, not conservative at all. You know, we, we went in the, this weekend with the sense that, yeah, we're gonna prepare a race winning truck uh, like we would any other week. And I think from a, you know, a strategy and a, a driving standpoint, you know, it's definitely more conservative. Um, you know, we had no reason to try to bulldog our way to the front to win the race um, or, or get up in the fence. You know, I ran left side tires on the seam all day and never had to go up and run the wall. Uh, there was no reason to, and, you know, we ended up six. So that's, um, that's honestly better than I thought we would do. You know, as conservative as we were running all day and just really never challenged anything on the restarts. You know, I think about every restart, uh, we lost a spot or two and then had to work to get it back over the, the course of the run. So uh, conservative, yeah, you know, just just honestly did what we needed to do. Congratulations to the number four Toyota team, Kyle Busch Motorsports, driver Eric Jones, crew chief Rudy Fugel, and team owner Kyle Busch. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.